Hey, welcome to Data Talks. We are going to work on another learning by doing video today. And we're looking at the housing market. And for memory, this is a merge uh, function type video. Merge, merge the two companies. Put a comment in the section if you know where that comes from. Wonder if Nate recognizes it or not. Okay, so let's just jump in here, folks. So it says housing market. First one is introduction. This time we will create our own data set. Hmm, with fictional numbers to describe a house my own picture is blocking this. Create random data. Don't try to reason of the numbers. Okay. So again, we get the import the necessary libraries. I'm going to assume uh, I use NumPy and pandas. So uh, import NumPy as np. Import pandas as pd. And then those are imported. Okay, step two, create three different series, that's capitalized, each of length 100 as follows. First random number from 1 to 4, the second random number from 1 to 3, the third a random number between 10,000 and 30,000. So it says a random number, but it says length 100, so I'm assuming that we want a series with random numbers from 1 to 4, 1 to 3, and 10,000 to 30,000. Actually, I feel like I did this one for miles per gallon. So let's see here. Um, before, first thing I'm going to do is just come up with the random numbers. And what strings to mind for me is numpy random rand int. Now, there could be a pandas native way to do this. Uh, I'd have to look that up. I usually just use numpy if I can. So these signatures low, high, size. We need a little bit more than that. Um, so this is what I was looking for. High is exclusive. Low is inclusive, so high is exclusive. So let's talk about that. So we want the first one to be between or from, from 1 to 4. So I want my low to be 1. I want my high to be 4, but since the high is exclusive and since these are integers, I'm going to put 5. That will get me 1, 2, 3, and 4, but not 5. Lastly, we size. I'm going to assume size is the count. Uh, so let's pass 100 here and see what we get. Okay, that looks pretty good. And let's count that to be sure. That's 100, just like we thought. Fine, okay, so now I have a random number from one to four, um, and there's 100 of them. However, I don't have a series. I have a NumPy array, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And it's specifically calling for a series. So this is not an unsolvable problem. And again, there might be a pandas native way to deal with this, um, but I'm not familiar with it if there is. So here we have a series, and let's just call this series one. I'm assuming, well, it says create series. I'm assuming we should assign these to a variable. So this is the general pattern that we're gonna follow here for the next two. And let's make this series two because I'm creative like that. And one to three. So again, with four not being included, giving passing these arguments will give me a series with one, two, or three in it. Again, 100 of them. Autocorrect really gets our auto fill always gets on my uh, nerves sometimes. Finally, we have 10,000 to 30,000. Again, I put 30,001 because that's not going to be included. That it gets me to include 30,000. We want 100 of those. So we have made these three series here. And it looks like I'm done with this step. I uh, don't know where to use merge yet. Okay, so step three, let's create a data frame by joining the series by column. Is this where I'm supposed to do a merge? My instinct here is just to do pandas data frame and then um, pass it a list, S1. Oh, seriously, <laughs> it's ridiculous. Uh, S2 <laughs> and S3. I remember to turn off my uh, messages and email for this video, unlike the last. So we should avoid unnecessary interruptions. So here's the data frame as I would construct it. And let's just reassign this to uh, this variable df. Now, just out of curiosity, uh, pandas uh, merge, assume I call it like this. What's my signature here? Left, inner, outer, string. When I think of merge, I'm thinking about I've got an index, 
and I'm going to bring a bunch of values in together. I, these series all probably have the same range index, but I just don't see it as a natural case for merge, although it probably could be done. I'm probably just not thinking of it correctly. So again, this is a merge video, merge, merge the two companies, and uh, I haven't used merge yet, and we're almost done. So there it is, folks. Um, and let's again just take a look at this so we can see the, the product of our labor so far. I have a range index for columns and a range index for the, uh, well, what I would call the index. So um, let's move on to the next step. Change the name of the columns to betters, bathers, and price underscore square meter. Okay, this is pretty simple as well. Columns equals, uh, let's make a list here, betters, bathers. <laughs> bathers sounds funnier to me than betters does. Price underscore square underscore meter. Okay. So um, let's run that. And then below that, let's take another look at our data frame. And we have assigned betters, bathers, and price underscore square underscore meter as the column names. And again, we just used the columns attribute and we assigned this list to that uh, attribute. And then the uh, data frame retained that. At least that's how I would explain that. Step five, create a one column data frame with the values of the three series and assign it to big column. So um, again, I'm not sure I'm supposed to use merge here. My When I want to take things and stack them together, I go to concat. So I go to PD, concat, and then pass it a list, I believe, pretty sure. So S1, S2, S3. And let's just see what we get here. Now, let's check the length here. So what's a little bit confusing there is 0 to 99. And so what we have here is three series. Series have their own index. And so it's showing you the first five of the first index and the last five of the last index sort of making it look like we only have 100 here, when in fact we have 300. So I would call a reset uh, index and then drop uh, equals true because I don't want that old index anywhere. And now you can see more clearly we have zero. We have, we have 300. In fact, it says length 300 right here. So we're supposed to make this big column. So, um, oh, and this is supposed to be a data frame. Okay. Let me think about this for a second. So I guess there's more than one way to do this as there is with everything in pandas. And let me see if I just pass this in there, what we wind up with. Okay. And then um, columns probably. It needs to be a collection or they're calling it a union. Columns equals uh, big. create a one column data frame with the values of the three series and assign it to big column. So is big column to be the name of the column inside the data frame, or is it to be the name of the data frame? We can cover our bases here and just do this, df name equals a big column. So now if we call df name, we'll find out that it's big column. Um, I don't routinely name data frames, and I don't remember why I've done it in the past, but there were occasions where naming the data frame helped me index into different data frames that I had sitting around, maybe in a list. I don't remember why I did it, but data frames can be named, and now we have big column as the data frame name and as the column name for this big column data frame. Step six, oops, it seems it's going to only, it seems it's it is only until index 99. Oh, <laughs> I just solved for that ahead of time. So let's redo this just to recreate the situation they've outlined here. So let's uh, let's make this df99 um, equals this, and then uh, df. So we're going to pretend that we didn't reset the index a few steps ago. I'm always getting ahead of myself in these videos. Um, Hmm. 
this? Uh, I'm missing a, yeah, that's my problem. Well, one of my many problems. So now, here's what they're talking about, and I already corrected for this. Oops, it seems it's only going, it is, it is going only until index 99. Is this true? And so we've talked about this. Uh, yeah, uh, sort of. I mean, here's index 99. Uh, if we wanted to get at index 99, I think we'll find it three times. So df 99, ialoc uh, 99. Let's see what this gets us. 0 and 3. It's not exactly what I was expecting. In any case, it's in there three times. We can also do this. Pandas uh, set option and then do uh, dis display max rows 999. So with that, if we do um, df99 here, we'll see that we have a lot of, of indexes. So here is the first 99, and it starts over with the second series that we've concatenated together stacked one on top of the other. Um, here's another 99. And then finally, we have a third 99. I, would, I don't ordinarily like to build a data frame with a range index, and the range index is not unique. In other words, each index isn't unique. Now, there might be situations that you want to do that. I don't know. But everything I do, I, I don't want to do that. So this says to re-index the data frame so that it goes from 0 to 299. We, we've already done this, but df 99. And this says, this does say re-index, which, which is an option. What I did originally was reset index, drop equals true. By passing drop equals true is the argument we don't wind up with the index as a new column. Actually, let me just show you what happens if we don't do that. So here's reset index. Now we have two columns in here, the one we started with, and then the index column, which we didn't want. So I almost never want the index column, but occasionally you do, at which point you'd not... Uh, not past this, and here we just have the uh, the new column in here, and it goes a long way. It'll go all the way to 300. We could rename this column if we wanted to. Um, so df 99 columns equals big column, which I think was the name they uh, prescribed. Uh, I think it's got to be in a list. I think I mentioned that before. So df 99. And then we have big column. And it goes all the way to 300. Oh, no, it doesn't. Because I didn't um, I didn't assign this back to DF99. So to get this to stick, we would do DF99. Well, I think I can pass in in place equals true. Yeah. So if I do in place equals true, when I reset the index to DF99, it will stick. And it will actually reset the index inside that function, not just give me a view or a temporary table. I think I already did this, df99. So now we can see that we have the big column and that it goes all the way to 300. Well, 0 to 299, which is a count of 300 rows. So that's it. I never use merge during our merge video. Sorry. Um, I use the methods I'm most familiar with. And uh, anyway, I hope this was helpful. If it was, please like, subscribe, all of that stuff. It really does make a difference. And also, again, if you know where Merge, Merge the Two Companies comes from, let me know down in the comments. We love that show at Data Talks. Thanks. Bye-bye.